Hi there, this is Lady Shell. Today I'm going to be doing the second part of my video for basic character creation. And this is part of our Fantasy Grounds Unity A through Z series. Now the first part of the character creation was a basic character. And now in episode 2B, I'm going to be doing customization to that character. Now you've been looking at my table here that I've already loaded up with my character that I made in the previous video, Guild the Flamebeard, and she has everything on her character except she does not have anything that is an advanced feature. So I am going to go to the Abilities tab and pull out the information that I need to add to the Actions tab. The Channel Divinity was one thing. I wanted to move my Light Domain spells from the Level 1 and Level 2 areas to their own areas so that they are not confused uh, with the spells that I get to practice every day. Because these spells do not need to be practiced or pre prepared every day. So then I have something called Warding Flare. That's a feature that I didn't add to add before. And I have Dwarven Resilience, which is a trait, and Stone Cunning, which is also a trait. And then we're going to go to the Actions tab, and we're going to start making our new power sections. So to make a new power section, and a power is basically just a heading, like Spells 1 and Spells 2 and Cantrips. So we're going to add some additional categories to give some more customization to this character. First I'm going to make standard actions. Now I type in the in the right box and then I put the cursor in the left box and when I do that it creates a power called standard actions. I'm going to do the same with racial traits. I'm going to do it with class features. I'm going to do it with light domain spells. I'm going to do it with div uh, channel divinity. Let's spell channel right. <laughs> And then I'm going to make something called consumables. This allows me to track any of my items that are in my inventory that are single use items. Now one of the items that I want to track is going to be a healing potion. So I'm going to go back to my inventory and I'm going to add the, the, uh, add the uh, potion to the inventory. So we've got it in our inventory and I'm going to put it in the backpack. Okay, so that's set, and then I'm going to go back over here, and I'm going to start adding some of these features. So I showed you how to make a new power, and down here in Standard Actions is part of a class feature, which I'm going to be using several things from Rob Tui's 5e effects coding. So I want to load up in the spells but it's going to be called Class Features. And I'm going to drag over the Dodge, the Help, the Hide, and the Ready. And then delete the one that I don't need. And then I'm going to click on the magnifying glasses so that they only take up one line. 
Now, other class features for the cleric, I'm going to go down to source and scroll down to cleric. And I need to add my Radiance of the Dawn, and that is up here. So we're going to drag this little girl over here. And then we're going to do Turn on Dead. And we are going to delete the extra space and click on the magnifying glasses. And I want you to notice something. Now notice that the Turn on Dead has a save, and it says Wisdom DC 8. I believe the Radiance has a save also. Yes, Con DC 8. Now, these are incorrect because unlike your spells that are in cantrips and specific spell levels, the game, or, well, Fantasy Grounds, does not recognize that you have a, a modifier, what your spell casting modifier is. And to find that out, I clicked on the our, uh, magnifying glass that is in the Channel Divinity Power, and it opens up this pop-up window. And if you look here where it says Ability, it does not have it. Now, if you watch the DC-10 change when I change it to Wisdom, now it's DC-13. So that was a big difference. So you could be failing your saves or your things that you're attacking could be failing or, you know, succeeding against your saves because you did not add your wisdom spell casting ability. So that's very important to remember to do. And it's only on things that are not listed as um, cantrips or spells, anything with spells in it. Now this spell is something that I did myself, so this also will need the modifier added. And you can tell by clicking the magnifying glass and noticing that it does not say wisdom here. So I'm gonna add the wisdom now, and anything that I add in here will have the correct modifier, or the correct spell save. Now the things that need to go in here are the fairy fire, the burning hands, and I need to take them out of here. And then I need to take the level two spells that are for there which is Flaming Spear and Scorching Ray. Okay, now let me turn on the edit and let me get rid of the ones that don't belong. And now you see that I only have six spells in here, four and two. And all the other spells are up here in my light domain. And I'm going to click on the magnifying glasses so that they have one line only. And notice I do have the wisdom saved now. And I need to delete the blank one up here. Okay, so now my spells are done. I can get rid of this. And I want to add the warding flare I already did this one. I want to add the warding flare. This is a class feature. I'm going to add the warding flare and it should be in here. There it is. And I'm adding that to my class features. Now, over here, I want to be able to track how many warding flares I get per long rest. And the answer is the wisdom modifier. So I look back at my wisdom modifier and see that is plus three, which means I can cast warding flare three times per long rest. So I'm going to make this warding flare uses. And then I need to 
turn on the mode to prepare and I need to change the uses to three. Okay, so now I have three. Oops. And if I go down here to com change it to combat, you'll see it gives me the three bubbles. And when I use the warding flare feature, I check them off. And then this, or actually I put it on the wrong one. Oops. Okay, me. Oops. Put it on preparation, and it is not the wording flare itself three times that you have that, and you get three uses per day. There. Okay, now combat, and the uses are on the right side. Okay, what else do we need to do? We need to, we've moved our light domain spells. I've got some racial traits that I want to add. Now I am a dwarf, so I'm going to scroll down to dwarf, and then I'm going to change the group to race trait, and you can see I get dwarven resilience and stone cunning. And I need to delete the one that doesn't have anything on it, and I need to Click on the magnifying glass so it only takes one line. Okay, and now the final thing I need to do is the consumables. So let's get rid of warning flare. We did that and we did our racial traits and we're done actually with all of these spell and class and race and etc. So what I want to do is I want to go in my inventory. I want to see which things do I want to track. I want to track my candles. I want to track my incense. For some reason, I don't know. It shouldn't have seven. It should have five. I don't know how, it got, how that got to be seven. I'm going to track the potion of healing. And I'm going to track the two rations. So that is one, two, three three, four. I need four lines. And I have four lines. So, oh wait, and I also have uh, water skin too. Rations. Water skin. Candles. And what was the last one? Incense. I could track the incense. Plus I want to track the how come I don't, oh, there's the water skin. Okay, so water skin. No, I mean, uh, rations, water skin, candles, and incense. And then I need to add one more for the potion of healing. Potion of healing. Now I need to code this so that it, um, is usable in the game and to do that I'm going to right click on where I have the words potion of healing and this brings up the radial menu I choose add action I choose the plus sign and now I need to give it the amount that a potion of healing gives you which is 2d4 so I grab the four-sided die with the left button clicked and I click it once with my right finger on the right button and I have two D4 and then plus two. So you click the, uh, you put the two in the bonus. So now it's two D4 plus two. I can close that. That is coded. And now we have to go back to preparation mode because we need to tell it how many of each of these consumables we have. We have 10 candles, we have 5 incense, we have 1 potion of healing, we have 2 rations, and we have 1 water skin. Now change that to combat, 
change it to actions and you are all set to play with this character it has she has all of her spells she has all of her features she has her weapons she has her ammo she has her class features she's all set to go so i hope you found this interesting and helpful and this is what we teach in our character creation classes at Fantasy Grounds College. So if you want a live class with a instructor, you can come to our Discord and sign up and then uh, make a account an account on our website with the same name that you use in the Discord. And you can sign up for a character creation class and then you can do this yourself on the, your instructor's table and you can use the books that they are using. Now I just used the player's handbook for this plus the modules from Rob Tui's 5e effects coding. Now I'm going to link to his bundle which includes the class features, racial traits, spells, and feats. Now I did not use feats on my character but that gives you four different modules for a single price or you could just buy the three that I used in this um, video but I think that the uh, to have the feats would be good because you might want to take a feat when you reach level four or maybe you're going to make a character that uses a feat at level one because it's a variant so I will put links to the bundle as well as links to our Discord and our website and the playlist that this video will be featured in. Again, this is Fantasy Grounds Unity A to Z, and this is session, or excuse me, episode 2B. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.